It is reported in a hadith of Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Eat suhoor, for there is a blessing in the suhoor. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back everyone. If you're new to my channel, you're welcome. And I would really appreciate it if you press the, sub the subscribe button and ring the notification bell to get notifications whenever I upload a new video. We are going to continue with the series of videos which today happens to be episode 2. I will be talking about the Sunnah of the Prophet, peace be upon him, during Iftar and Suhoor. We all know that Suhoor is the meal that we take before we start our fast, that is just before Fajr. But before that, we are going to take a look at the importance of Suhoor itself. It is reported in the hadith of Anas ibn Malik, may Allah be pleased with him, that the Prophet wasallam said, it's suhoor, for there is a blessing in suhoor. And from this hadith, you can see that there is a lot of goodness in suhoor, which we're going to take a look at. First of all, suhoor is a blessed meal, as we have seen in the hadith. Not only that it is a blessed meal, but it gives one energy and gives one the ability to carry out the act of ibadah throughout the day. It helps one not to be lazy during the day. Suhoor re reduces extreme hunger and thirst that little meal that most people take for granted, it helps one, it helps to reduce extreme hunger and thirst during the day. Suhoor energizes and stimulates the digestive system. And there's a hadith of the Prophet said that we should, one shouldn't omit suhoor, for it differentiates our fasting with that of the people of the book, Ahlul Kitab. And as Muslims, we should avoid imitating other people other than Muslims, other than the Prophet وسلم, who is our role model in this deen. Eating sahur, you will have to get up at the end of the night for one to take sahur because you do not take sahur at the beginning of the night or the middle. It is only taken at the end of the night. When you get up to eat sahur, you get a lot of benefits. You get to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we know that it is the best time, the best time to make dua during the night is at the end of the night, the third part of the night. So that you get a lot of benefits under that. And, one, and also one gets to pray at the right time because immediately you eat suhoor. We're coming to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu so, so we get to see how eating suhoor and, eat and praying on time come together. The sunnah of the Prophet, peace be upon him, during suhoor. It was narrated that Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, said that the Prophet, peace be upon him, said the best sahur for the believer is this. And another hadith of Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, the Prophet wasallam said, sahur is a blessed meal, so one should not omit it even if he takes a sip of water. So we can see from these two hadith that dates and water are the best meal to take sahur because dates, they are very light. It has a lot of nutritional content that, and it is very easy to digest. We can see from this two hadith that the Prophet Sallallahu has made it very easy for one to take suhoor because there are some people who when, whenever they take suhoor, the fasting gets a little bit harder for them because they, they're not, their body system is not used to eating at that time. But when you take something very light, it helps you, it keeps your body stimulated and energized throughout the day. And they're very light, these two things. Dates and water, they are the best meal for one to take sahur. They are. Another sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, that we wouldn't want to skip during sahur is delaying sahur. It was narrated that Zaid ibn Thabit said that we ate sahur with the Prophet وسلم, and then he went to pray. So the narrator asked him, how long does it take? How long is the difference between you eating sahur and uh, the Prophet وسلم, going to pray? He said as long as it takes one to recite 50 verses. And you know that 50 verses, and you know that 50 verses is almost equivalent to half a juzu. And that will take a person at least 10 minutes to recite half a juzu. So we can see that the Prophet ﷺ delayed suhoor until just before Fajr. If we are going to list down the sunnah of the Prophet during suhoor, you delay it and then you take either date or water or you take both the two. It is permissible for one to take another meal. It doesn't have to really be date. You can take anything. But there are some certain foods that we need to take during suhoor and there are some certain foods that we need to avoid during suhoor. There's a, video, there's a video made by a sister on her YouTube channel, Bits of Maria. I'll drop the link below. Please do go and check it out. She, she has made mention of foods to eat and to, um, 
She has made mention of foods to eat and foods to avoid during Suhoor and Iftar. So I would really appreciate if you go and check that video to get full information on what to eat and what to avoid during Suhoor if you're going to take something else other than dates and water or if you want to add something to the meal during Suhoor. Coming to Iftar, we know that Iftar is the meal we take when, we're going, when we are breaking our fast. Immediately we hear the Adhan, the, one of the sinners of the Prophet, peace be upon him, during Iftar is that he has sins to break his fast. Where he says, the people will continue to be fine so long they hasten to break their fast. So I urge you and I to hurry in breaking our fast. Just as during Suhoor, there are some certain foods that the Prophet وسلم, takes during Suhoor, during iftar, there are some foods that the Prophet, peace be upon him, breaks his fast with. It is narrated in a hadith by Anas anhu. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, would break his fast with fresh dates. If there were no fresh dates, he would break his fast with dry dates. If there were no dry dates, then he would take sips of water and then pray. So we can see from this hadith that just as we take suhoor with dates and water, during iftar, it is also good to take free, um, to take dates and water because dates they have high nutritional contents in them it helps digest when one fast his body changes and dates help in retaining one's body sugar level during the day so during iftar you would want to increase your sugar level to have energy the prophet وسلم, during iftar he would make supplications and the best supplication to break the fast after taking a morsel of food is this is the supplication the Prophet peace be upon him makes during Iftar. Just before Suhoor, it is good time for one to make dua. Also, during Iftar, it is a very good time just before the Iftar, before the Adhan is being called, for one to make supplications, to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers our prayers in that time rapidly. So we would want to we wouldn't want to miss this chance. In this season it is not everybody, it is not everyone that is capable of feeding themselves. It is not everyone that is that has the privilege to break their fast. So I urge you and I to please help the needy in whatever way possible that we can. You get double reward for fasting, for feeding and for taking somebody else out of distress. Allah will not only reward you, but will relieve you of distress in this life, in the dunya, or akhirah. So I urge you and I to reach out to those neighbors, to those loved ones, to those relatives that have nothing to put on the table during Iftar. I urge myself and you to help in whatever way possible that we can. There are NGOs moving around asking for donations to help the needy. Help them donate to them. Help anyone. It could be the person next door, your neighbor. It could be your loved ones. It could be your close relatives. It could be your friends. There are some people who are very shy to ask for help. Just help. People cannot come to you and ask for help. They are too shy to do that. So just give out to whoever you think needs it. Even when a person doesn't need it, sometimes those that we see do not suffer. Those that we think do not need it are the ones who need it the most. So just give out. Reach out to people in whatever way possible that you can. I pray, I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants you and I reward for our good deeds and may he elevate our status in this dunya and in the akhirah. Do not forget to like, comment, subscribe, share. Let me know in the comment section what you think about this video or if you have anything in mind that you would want me to make videos on or if you have something to share along with us that I have not mentioned in this video. Just let me know. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.